So welcome back. Hope everybody had a great weekend. And for those that were able to watch the solar eclipse today, congratulations. Hope you enjoyed that as well. Hopefully you also used the proper eyewear. Uh, but as for the world of gaming, a new Xbox development was uncovered over the weekend that may actually speak to some of their future plans and what they have in mind for their next consoles. This is a great sign, if anything else. So we will get into all of that today, as well as that Pandora's box for Xbox and their games. Yeah, another report came out and indicated that Microsoft is indeed looking to port more games to PlayStation and Nintendo in the future if they pass a certain litmus test. So do make sure to stay tuned for that as well. But let's just go and jump right into the video, starting off with some new Persona 6 information. I know a lot of us are very excited to see what that next Persona 6 will be. And this is coming from the reliable Atlas and Sega leaker Midori. She's been pretty spot on with various different leaks in the past. And she now claims that Persona 6 has been in development since 2019 and started along Persona 3 Remake as well as Persona 5 Tactica. Now, obviously, Persona 6 is a much bigger game than those two, and it's also a brand new experience with new characters, so its development, yes, is going to take longer. But I think what this kind of tells us is that its release date is fairly close. Most games anymore seem to take right around four to six years to develop, and while apparently Persona 6 has already been in development for five years, so if this is actually true, then I'd say release date for next year seems very likely by this point, which was already kind of rumored anyways. This more or less just kind of backs up those rumors with more credence, but I will say, if this turns out to be true, this will be a very exciting launch period. Obviously, we are expecting the Nintendo Switch successor to release next year, and if Persona 6 is completely multi-platform as rumored, then it could be a big part of Nintendo's launch lineup. It could release during the first year for the Switch 2, and that not only would be a major game for Nintendo, but it would also be huge for the Persona brand. I keep talking about this, but Nintendo is just so massive over in Japan. Persona obviously is very big there as well, and I just think the combination of the two, this could potentially be a major boost for the Persona IP. Now, with that said, though, Midori also leaked the new collar theme for Persona 6, which allegedly will be green. They said this will be the collar, which was found in a previous Persona 5 picture. Now, I don't know if this really tells us all that much. I've seen some jokes online that this could mean an Xbox version is confirmed. But, uh, you know, all jokes aside... It's kind of cool to think about how they'll stylize that green collared theme. They've done just such an excellent job with Persona 3, 4, and 5. So, yeah, let's bring on green in Persona 6. Now, we also got another welcome update for Helldivers 2. Its success continues to roll in as it reportedly was the best selling game in the UK for its second consecutive month in a row. This was reported by GameIndustry.biz and they said after eight weeks, Helldivers 2 sales are now trending ahead of where Spider-Man 2 was after the same length of time. They are, of course, very different games with Spider-Man 2 retailing at £70 and only releasing on PlayStation 5. Helldivers 2 has a lower price and is also available on PC. So, yes, I mean, technically they are correct in their assessment. It's not necessarily an apples to apples comparison just because Helldivers 2 is a cheaper $40 budget title and it's also available on PC. That is all very much true. But at the same time, I think it is important to note here that we are comparing this to one of the world's biggest franchises ever, Spider Man. And that's being compared to a game that even took Sony by surprise. Sony is the publisher for Helldivers 2, and they weren't expecting this type of success. But here we are, and it's now outpacing the biggest PlayStation 5 exclusive. I think that's fairly telling of the type of success that Helldivers 2 is having. Ultimately, though, what does all this really mean, and what's its importance? Well, I think there's a few different takeaways from its results. I think the first of which is something that the entire industry needs to take note of. If you make a fun multiplayer game that isn't predatory, and if it's fairly priced, then yes, fans will potentially buy in. Then the second takeaway, I'd say that's more for PlayStation, and I guarantee that they're looking at this as we speak. Obviously, Helldivers 2 has had a lot of success on PC specifically, and that bodes very well for day-and-date PC releases, or at least when it comes to PlayStation's live service titles. I mean, we'll see about all of their single-player stuff. We haven't really got concrete evidence that they're going to do that quite yet, 
but Sony recently did suggest that they are looking to expand more and more beyond just their PlayStation consoles. And Helldivers 2 does kind of back up their reasoning. I mean, Helldivers 2 really is that prime example of the potential they could have with those day and date releases. Ultimately, though, I mean, we'll just have to kind of see what happens, but big congrats to both PlayStation and Arrowhead for their success together. Well deserved. Okay, so let's go talk about Xbox and a project that they're once again reviving for what appears to be for future consoles. I mean, okay, this has been well publicized. We know that they're working on a new console. That's not really a big surprise, despite some of the concern that we've seen this year. But I will say this much. With every new console, whether that be PlayStation, Nintendo, or Xbox, there's always one very important question that comes up pretty much immediately. In fact, currently, this is one of the most speculated points for the Switch successor. What about my current library of games? Will they be playable on that next console? Will it have backwards compatibility? Well, at least when it comes to Xbox, it does sound like Team Xbox is very much committed to that mission. This actually comes directly from the Xbox head, Sarah Bond, and in an email shared with Windows Central, this is what she sent out to her team. We have formed a new team dedicated to game preservation, important to all of us at Xbox and the industry itself. We are building on our strong history of delivering backwards compatibility to our players, and we remain committed to bringing forward the amazing library of Xbox games for future generations of players to enjoy so that back combat team is coming back once again which i mean you know they pulled off some real magic last generation i mean you can say what you want about xbox they make mistakes from time to time but one category that they really lead by example in is with their backwards compatibility they without a doubt right now are the best when it comes to backwards compatibility last generation they put a lot of work to bring up their old games and on several occasions they even improved things like their frame rate or you know you have options for things like automatic hdr and when you start to think about it, it really is crazy that they offer original Xbox games, Xbox 360, Xbox One, and Xbox Series games all on one unified platform. You can't say that about any of the other console makers, which I think really speaks to Xbox's dedication, and it's just a really consumer-friendly move. Even more so because you don't have to rebuy your physical library. If you have a compatible back compat Xbox 360 title, you know, let's say Blue Dragon as one such example. Well, you can simply insert that game into your Xbox Series X and it'll download it for you at no extra charge. You don't have to rebuy a digital copy like you have to with a lot of retro games on other platforms. So Xbox really has just done such an amazing job with their back compat program and it's interesting to hear that they're once again reviving it. I think that also kind of begs the question though, as to why? Well, I think the timing of this is certainly very interesting in the aspect that they just acquired Activision Blizzard. I imagine that they still want to add some of their old games like Singularity, uh, they have Transformers, or even the old Xbox 360 Crash Bandicoot and Spyro games. These are all still sorely missing on modern platforms, and now that they own Activision, they can change that. So that would kind of be one of the immediate benefits of a team like this. But I think more so, this also speaks to their long-term future. This pretty much all but ensures that they are investing to keep your library intact for their next console. There's been rumors circulating that they might have something planned for 2026, and this team here being put together in 2024, sounds like they might be preparing to get everything ready to go for that next console. To a degree, I'd say it also kind of gives them a little leeway as well. You know, let's say that hypothetically their next console switches architectures. Well, if they do go with something different, this move here would kind of be a move to get all of those games working once again on that next console regardless. So ultimately, I think both for their short term and for their long term future, I think this is fantastic news for anybody who's invested into the Xbox ecosystem. Even if you're not invested in the Xbox ecosystem, I still think it's great just because you can buy games all the way back to that original Xbox console. And that is just something that you don't see on other console makers. It really is incredible. Truthfully, I really wish PlayStation and Nintendo would do something like this as well, but... 
hey, if we're lucky here, uh, maybe Xbox's next console will once again keep every generation of Xbox together on one unified console, and that really would be amazing. Now, let's just go ahead and uh, backtrack here for a moment, though, because earlier I talked about PlayStation and Helldivers 2, and how its success on PC is a good sign for Sony to do more day-and-date PC releases. Well, reportedly, Xbox is doing something similar, but instead of for PC, it sounds like they're doing that for PlayStation and Nintendo. Really, just one of the biggest topics all year long has been about their more multi-platform approach. Earlier this year, in a surprise move, they ported over Hi-Fi Rush, Pentiment, Grounded, and Sea of Thieves. Well, according to The Verge, Sea of Thieves specifically is a very important port. This is what they said. Sources familiar with Microsoft's plans tell me that the company continues to evaluate other Xbox exclusive games coming to PlayStation 5. I understand Sea of Thieves will be a key test for whether other games might make their way to PlayStation 5 or the Nintendo Switch. And reading that, I, I know a lot of people want these rumors to just kind of die, but you know, that does kind of, you know, go back to Pandora's box. We'll come back to that in just a moment. But, you know, I do understand that this is a controversial statement to a degree. But I don't really think it's all that surprising. Sea of Thieves, I would say, was a really interesting choice to port over to PlayStation. And let me explain. I think out of all the four games that they ported, this is the one that made the most sense strategically. It's been incredibly successful for Xbox. But at the same time, it's also an aging game that's likely on the decline. I mean, it's now been out for six years. So, you know, they had a choice to either let this game die slowly as an Xbox console exclusive, or they could try to continue that success by breathing new life into it, which is ultimately what they did by porting it over to PlayStation. Now, I do understand that not everybody in the Xbox community loves this plan, but this does actually directly benefit that Sea of Thieves community that is still active on Xbox. Uh, this basically just allows new players to join in, and this could actually extend the life cycle of Sea of Thieves for several more years. So it does benefit this game specifically in that way. Going back to PlayStation, though, if it does find success there, then, then yes, Microsoft could view that as a good sign for other live service titles as well, which, you know, they certainly have a lot to choose from. I mean, who really knows by this point, though? It, it, it's hard to say, but if a game is five plus years old, like Sea of Thieves, maybe they will. But the first game that immediately came to my mind when I read this was State of Decay 2. That's a game I could see over on PlayStation, and Honestly, if they were to do something like that, they could use that for brand recognition as State of Decay 3 is currently in development right now. That could still be exclusive to Xbox, but they could use State of Decay 2 to highlight and promote that for PlayStation players. At the end of the day, though, and, and this is important to keep in mind, this is only a rumor for the time being. I mean, we just need to see how all this plays out, but, you know, their strategy continues to be a focal point, and whether they like those questions or not... Xbox or Microsoft or whomever decided to make these decisions, they kind of brought this on themselves. They more or less opened up Pandora's box, and that's why we keep seeing these rumors continue to swirl. I mean, last year, if these rumors were going around, we could just say, hey, they're fake. But because Xbox actually has ported over a few games, it's harder to just completely deny. You can't rule anything out by this point. That's why these, these rumors just continue to move the way they are. Anyways, though, that's going to be it for this video, but uh, let me know what you all think about all of this. Do you believe Xbox will port more games over to other consoles? And what do you think about their new back compact program? Does that give you more confidence for their next console or not? Until next time, though, peace out.